all of the exercises that you know, that have names, they were based on the scaffolding of misunderstanding. We thought muscles contract one way and that's all they do. It goes this way. So then you go, well, okay, I'll build a machine so I can train going this way. Because that's what the bicep does. But that's not what the bicep does. The bicep goes this way and this way and this way and this way and that way. It's involved in way more things. So now you've got to say, is he saying that everything that we've done may not make sense? That's an arrogant statement. But in a way, yes. Like Think of the procession of how this worked. We have training. Somebody starts to build like Nautilus machines. You remember that time? Any people like ish, ish, my age, ish? Okay. So you guys remember the Nautilus machines came out. And oh my god, we gotta do all these machines. So you get all these machines. You and used to do a circuit. A circuit yeah. of machines, yeah. <laughs> and, and on the machine, if you remember, it's still there today. You'll see the body like this. And then you'll see the entire chest is painted green. <laughs> so this movement is for your chest. Now let's pause. That is where we were in knowledge. So don't take this as an insult. That's what we thought. When you contract chest, chest contracts. But that's not how that works. Because when you're in the machine, it's up to you to move the machine. Right? So we said, well, this isn't good because people now we know, people are just patternizing themselves to the machine. So we said, that's not good. It's not functional. So now, if I don't know if you guys remember what happened after that, everyone started to find their way out of the machines into the free weight area. Okay? Wow, now we're being functional. And you know what we did? Instead of patternizing ourselves using the machine, we decided to patternize ourselves using free weights. And you're doing this all the time. Like, so all you're doing is you're patternizing yourself outside of a machine. So when you do an exercise, name an exercise, go. Lunge. What is it? Lunge. Lunge. When you do your lunge, as soon as I say lunge, your brain constrains the variables based on someone else's brain who constrained the variables when they coined the term lunge. When I say lunge, you put yourself in your brain and you see yourself right now, same outfit, doing a lunge. Everyone picture themselves doing a lunge. So now when you move, you're consciously trying to make your body fit into this preconceived movement called a lunge. And you do your lunge. And you keep doing your lunge, it's your lunge. Un only unfortunately, the muscle doesn't contract like the full pec goes green. When you do a particular movement, if you, if you look at how muscles contract, if you look at a muscle in cross section, you see that there's, it's bundled. And then if you look in the bundle, you see that there's smaller little bundles. You guys mm -hmm. Par ep epimesium, paramecium, endomesium. Okay, so when you contract and you pick a pattern, you guys want to pick the lunge pattern, yeah? Okay, so when you pick the lunge pattern, it's not like whatever muscle this is, the whole thing is involved. Does the all or none principle of muscular contraction, does it talk about entire muscles? So as soon as the, the, the nerve discharges, the full muscle has to contract? Is that what it says? It does not say that. What it says is when motor units are discharged, the entire motor unit has to contract. Not the muscle. A motor unit is only the nerve innervating two or three muscle fibers. So the all or none principle does not relate to the entire muscle, only to the specific motor units involved in the pattern that you're running. So if you're running a lunge, conceivably, this muscle fiber will be involved, as well as this one, as well as that one, as well as that one, this one, and that one. That is the pattern of the lunge. So if that's what you're doing, the next time you lunge, guess what you get to train? You get to train this one, and that 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 one. How about on Wednesday? You get to train that one, that one, that one, that one, and that one. What do you think you're getting good at? That one, that one, that one, that one, that one. What's adapting? That one, that one, that one, that one, and that one. Not that one. That one's not adapting. Look at all the potential 
that your muscle has. Because when you choose another one, a different pattern might be something different. It might be this one, this one, this one, and that one. Right? Now, keep that in your mind, and now let's layer on the next thing I said. I asked you guys, how much access do you have to your head? And people said, well, I only have 25% of what I think I could have. I have 10% of what I think I could have. So now, not only do you not have access to your whole muscle, you have access to even less to use, right? And even though you have 15% of a working hip, the lunge is not necessarily gonna activate all 15% of what you have available. You might only be using five. Now what happens to tissue that you continuously train? Is, conti is tissue ultimately adaptable for the rest, like you can just keep adapting keep going and stronger. If that's the case, people here have been bench pressing for 30 years. You should be benching 17,000 fucking pounds. But you don't because you realize that you hit these barriers and the barriers are that your tissue cannot adapt indefinitely. So you're gonna hit this plateau wall or you're gonna get injured if you keep doing the same thing over and 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 over again. Does that make sense? So what we're saying is you have to constantly be trying to get access to more of your hip. The more access to stuff you have, the more stuff is involved in more stuff. So yeah, when you drive up a bench press, if I can give you access to more stuff that you can train more, of course it's gonna make you, make you stronger. Go deeply into this, but I showed you a length tension curve, did I not? I showed you this curve like that, and I said, that everyone is pretty strong in the mid-range by default. In the second summit, I point out something. I point out the fact that you've trained your mid-ranges for your entire life. That's why you're weak here and here. You don't do a lot of stuff out here. With every, any set of any exercise you've ever done, as soon as you start to fatigue, what do you cut out? The end range is first. Why? because you're so good in here. Look how tall it is, look. Look, look, look. That's amazing. What, what do you want? you want? it? You want it to go up to here? That doesn't work. So wh where's the lowest hanging fruit? How do I make a, 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 a person whose joints can really function in the mid-range, how do I help that person? The lowest hanging fruit is here. Now what happens if you drive that up? If you drive that up, now the curve starts to look more like that. You're still gonna have more passive than you do active, but the more you get, the greater your active range of motion. And the greater your active range of motion, the more you have available. So that helps to defend you, because strength execution is the only thing that's mitigating an injury. Because I said an injury is, uh, the force goes in, it exceeds the force loading capacity, it breaks. If I have more stuff to absorb force with, I'm a little safer than I was before. I also have more degrees of freedom. The more degrees of freedom you have, the better you are at dealing with movement variables as they come in. For sure, when you're on the field, it is not gonna be as controlled as when you're in the gym. There is gonna be way more variables coming at you. If you only practice the variables in the pattern that you practice, then you've not practiced accepting other variables. You're honing, your, you're almost, locking yourself into patterns. And we're saying that you have to expand your way out of the patterns. And based on that information, this changes everything. Now, maybe you don't have to use the named pattern. Maybe a squat is only useful for some people. It's not generically useful. And a lot of people, instead of squatting, your goal should be hip. I, I need a hip. So now you just take your hip work and you change your not preference, what's the word I'm looking for? You change your focus. Now you're focusing on hip. Now, where people go wrong is that people's time scales are so short right now. Like, I'm talking about developing a human and or athlete over the course of a life, and most people are worried about what they're doing Tuesday at the gym. And how, how do I find that out? I go on Instagram and I go, oh, that shit looks cool. Let's put that into my programming. So you have no long, there's no long-term programming. So sure, you take out an exercise, your client's gonna panic. They're gonna go, I, I, I have to exercise, I have to do this. What 
I'm saying is, yeah, I'm making you exercise shit you've never exercised before. And if you've never exercised it before, then you're probably not going to want to do some fantastical movement with the shit that you've never used. So we're going to start very slow, and we're going to start getting you to isometrically access stuff that you can't access. If you have a person who is you deem uncoordinated or they're just off of an injury, what type of contractions do you start with? The easiest type. You don't do ballistic plyometrics. You do, can you contract your muscle? Can you isometrically create force? And then you go from there. So all the system is, is I'm saying do that, but pick where you're doing it. Don't always do it to your patterns. Do it to your body where it's needed. Does that make sense? Now, based on that, I also said that the health of the joint is part of this process because a healthy joint is a joint which by definition will learn better because the way you learn is by practicing. There is visual input, there's auditory input, there's coach cueing, all great stuff. You have to study all of it. If you want to study coach cueing, I know Nick Winkleman has a very, very good book out right now amazing at how to cue, how to talk, how to get stuff out of your athlete. But even if you're a great cue, you are working in, in the biology. Like your playing field is the biology. So no matter how much your auditory cues are good, if the biology is not good, you can't auditory cue yourself past your shitty biology. So if you want to increase your biology, you want to internally train. You want to bring health to joints. Why? Because a joint that's healthy, the tissue is healthy. And I told you mechanoreceptors are just slightly altered normal tissue. So if you have good quality normal tissue, you have good quality mechanoreceptors, which means your mechanoreception that is sent to your nervous system will be up to date and it will be accurate. In other words, the way you learn is through the filters of your joint. If your joint filter is clean, then you will learn faster and you will learn more efficiently and you will build yourself better patterns. That's why I put this up and I draw the line in the sand and I say there's pattern training. What's pattern training? Any training or movement which is confined by human consciousness is a pattern. So as soon as you name me an exercise, pattern. Baseball pitching, pattern. It's not normal. There's no inherent normalness to baseball pitching. The only ultimate truth is what came from natural selection. Everything else we're just making this shit up as we go. Yes? So we come back here and we say pattern training. That includes everything else. But let's call this external training. And what I'm saying is FRS, what we're trying to give you is a system of internal training. If you internally train, if you have good articulations, you will create good patterns. Because that's how you make your patterns. You make it based on information coming from your joints. Says who, bro? Says life. Human physiology, motor learning, that's how it happens. If you make your joints better, you get better patterns. But you can work your patterns as much as you want and it will not bring you articular optimization. Why? Because the pattern exercise is not for your joint. It's for the pattern. So if anything, your pattern is dehumanizing you so that you can use your human body for that pattern. It will not, it's not for the health of your shoulder. Come down here. Internal training, which is what I'm saying for you to do, internal training also leads to pattern optimization. If you internally train your shoulder and you, you've worked back here with your shoulder, you've actually taken time to be back here, well then when you go practice your muscle ups, you've been here. You have experience, you have strength, you have access to tissue, you have the ability to dissipate forces because you can contract into a range of motion.